first, let's take a look at what the accelerometer application looks like when we implement it in App Inventor 2. Here is the design blocks for the, our little app, and the interface to the user is quite simple. I've got three labels here. Uh, I've labeled them X, Y, and Z, and I've given them each a separate color so that they're easily distinguishable. In here, I also have an accelerometer sensor, which is a non-visible component, which I've dragged over from the sensor drawer. And if I look at the blocks editor, I see that the application is extremely simple. The only event I'm interested in is what happens uh, each time the accelerometer changes. And what I do in that case is take each of the labels and update them with whatever accelerometer value is being returned by the sensor. So now let's have a brief look at what the application looks like when it's running. Of course, I can't use the emulator here, so I have to use the AI2 companion to run this app on my cell phone. With the phone sitting still on my desk, you can see that the acceleration is near zero in the X and Y direction and around 9.8 in the Z direction. Try to figure out why. Now let's implement the same functionality using uh, Android Studio. I'm going to start by creating a new project. To start off with, we're going to create some instance variables. We're Okay, I'm going to add the three labels. I'm going to remove this text view that's currently there called Hello World. And I'm going to come over to the widgets and add three plain text views. Okay, uh, I've got my three text views, uh, X, the X, the Y, and the Z. Uh, they're not showing up right on, not on the layout, but when we uh, populate them in our app, that should be fine. Okay, we're going to create an initialization method, as is so often the case. And I'm going to write that method right now. And in that method, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the fields that are in the Java class with the corresponding fields that are in the layout. OK, so now I've uh, connected the Java variables to their layout counterparts. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to instantiate my accelerometer and also the uh, sensor manager. Okay, I've initiated my sensor manager by using the get system service uh, method and telling it the kind of system service that I want. And I've uh, initialized my accelerometer by asking the sensor manager to give me the default sensor and telling it that I want the accelerometer sensor. Notice that we have to use the sensor manager to get at the sensors on the device. Whereas in the case with App Inventor 2, we could uh, use the accelerometer directly. This is just one of the reasons why the code is so much more complicated using Android SDK than it is App Inventor 2. The next thing that we have to do is we have to register the, the sensor and uh, tell it uh, who is going to take action when the sensor fires. So since we're going to do this all in a single class, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to implement the interface sensor event listener. And immediately we're getting complaints that we haven't implemented the necessary methods. So I'm just going to come over here and click on this. And it's going to instantiate the two methods that we need. We're not going to be using this on accuracy changed method in this particular app. So I'm just going to put a comment in here saying it's not used. And what we're going to do is we're going to put in code in here so that each time the sensor reports a change, it's going to update the three text fields using the information that's returned by the sensor. Each time the sensor fires, it calls this onSensorChange method. And in the parameter list, it passes along this sensor event object. 
Inside the sensor event object is all the information that the sensor has gathered. And the one that's a particularly important to us for this application, inside event, is the values field of the event, which contains an array. And the first three elements of that array contain the acceleration in the x, the y, and the z direction. So what we're going to do is we're going to strip out those three values and load them into our text fields. And now we're basically done building this app. Normally we would test an accelerometer app using a device, but it turns out that the emulator on Android Studio is sophisticated enough to mimic a real accelerometer. So we can actually test this app using the emulator. Here you see the emulator is running with our app and we've currently got the emulator pretending to hold the phone in an upright direction so that the screen is directly facing the user and you can see that the X and the Z uh, components are near zero while the Y component which is this up down component right here has a value close to the theoretical 9.8 if I turn the phone, you'll see that the acceleration from gravity switches from the y dimension to the x dimension. Here it's the positive x direction in the negative x direction. And likewise, if I continue to turn the phone, here the phone is upside down and you can see that it's experiencing it in the negative y direction. 